All right. Hello and welcome everyone to Varsity Tutors, where if you were with us a couple of weeks ago when uh, Ben talked to us about how to build the birdhouse, you'll see that he nailed it. And so we asked him to be back here to, uh, to teach us a little bit more about how to use tools. I know a lot of us weren't expecting to, uh, to use as much tape as we did on that project. So he's got a whole lot of exciting things for, uh, for us to learn about. Now, before we get started, those of you who have been with us for multiple classes, you know the drill by now. Uh, it would The only thing that throws a wrench into our system is if you don't make it as interactive as possible. So use the tool to the right of the screen to answer Ben's questions and ask him some questions of your own. And we'll make sure we do some Q&A at the end to learn all the things that are on your mind about your toolkit. And you'd have to be nuts to bolt right at the end of class because before you leave, we're gonna give you an opportunity to lean into the screen, take a selfie with Ben. And if you upload it to Instagram, tag Ben and tag Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win a pretty sharp looking hammer from uh, uh, from his shop right there that uh, yeah, he's holding up for us there right now. There it is. So, all right, before I screw this up, I should hand it over to the man himself, uh, your teacher for today. Um, Craftsman and uh, handyman extraordinaire, Ben Napier. All right. What's up, y'all? So, uh, like he said, I am a craftsman, and we have a saying in our wood shop that a craftsman never blames his tools. Okay, so today I'm going to give you a quick little rundown about things that everybody should have in their toolbox. Okay, now, the list that you got sent, it said we're gonna talk about screwdrivers, hammers, wrenches, and pliers, and that you'll need a uh, camera phone for the end. But I wanted to do a quick little run through of what else you might need in there, okay? So you need a toolbox, all right? Or a, a tool roll or a tool bag, just something that you can keep your tools organized in. Um, I've had friends that used five gallon buckets with a little canvas thing around the top. Um, we used to, when I'd go out uh, mending fences with my grandfather, we would take all of our hand tools in a five gallon bucket. We would just put what we needed in there and then we'd have the bigger tools in the back of the truck. Um, so we're gonna do a quick little run through. There are all sorts of different kinds of pliers. I like to always have a set of needle nose pliers and a set of just your plain old standard pliers, okay? If you're really good, you can use them with one hand. Um, Phillips screwdrivers, flat screwdrivers, uh, all the different screwdrivers, some sort of a knife, something that you can cut with, though, uh, if you're under, I don't know what age, let's say 16, make sure your parents are cool with you having something to cut with in your toolbox. Um, and it doesn't have to be a utility knife. It can just be, you know, a folding pocket knife. That's usually what I have. This one was handy and I just grabbed it so that I could use it to show you guys. And some kind of tape. I like to have tape. I use tape for a lot of things. Um, tape has tape and a knife have gotten me out of more jams than you can imagine. Okay. So first thing we're going to talk about is I believe hammers. Okay. No, we're going to talk about screwdrivers. See, I'm already getting messed up. It's like the tree house all over again. Uh, so we're going to talk about screwdrivers. What are the two major types of screwdrivers. Uh-huh. See, some of y'all, you did your homework, you knew. Though I did see a star in there. Nobody, star screwdrivers are a little more specific, all right? But here's what I've got today, okay? I've got just a regular Phillips and a flat screwdriver, okay? Um, my father calls the uh, flat screwdriver, a slotted screwdriver, but it's a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips head screwdriver, okay? Now, a lot of people get irritated with flathead screws, okay? Um, they think, you know, like, these don't, they don't fit as well as a Phillips, and there's a reason for that, okay? So I've got a flathead screw right here, and like, if you stick this in there, it's got a lot of play, okay? I don't know if you can hear that. Probably not, okay? It's really loose in there, okay? That's because flat screwdrivers, all screws for that matter, have a specific size to them, okay? Now, this is something I didn't learn until I was, 
I don't know. I was on up there. It was after I had started making Hometown. So this was something that I never knew about screws, okay? They have a very specific size, okay? So this is a, a, a gray screwdriver, a number four flat screwdriver, okay? It is way too small for that screw, all right? But if I dig around here a little bit more, that's a number six. That's a little bit better of a fit. All right, now I'm going to grab this one. It's a number eight. Now that's a good fit, okay? Now the trick when doing any kind of screw is if you're screwing into wood, you want to drill a pilot hole, and then you give good, firm pressure and push down, but not too much pressure. You don't want to, like, push down and then shove through. I actually have a bobo on my finger right now where I was mounting a screen door at my house over the weekend, and I pushed too hard with my screwdriver, and it slipped off the screw and poked me in the finger, okay? So, and for that, I should have been wearing work gloves. A little safety tip for you there, okay? Um, safety glasses, we talked about those last week. Everybody should have that. So, do you feel like you got a pretty good grasp on the screwdrivers now? I mean, you've got your flat screwdriver and your Phillips. If you have your toolbox and you want to, okay, so for instance, Aaron and I, my wife and I, my family, we travel in a camper a lot, and I've got a toolbox in my camper. Now, the thing about a camper is this is about as big of a toolbox as you want. Mine is about this size, okay? And I like having multi-tools in there, so things like this that's, okay, it just looks like your standard Phillips screwdriver, but I can pull the head out, flip it around, and then it's a smaller Phillips, all right? Or... I can pull this end out and it's got a square tip, okay? Flip it around and it's got a star on it. But then I actually, I think each one of these, this is actually not the one that I, yeah. See that pulls out. So in this one tool, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different screwdrivers, okay? That's something handy you can keep in your toolbox if you're, you know, on the road a lot, or if you're just trying to like build up your tools. Now, here's something that I like to talk about um, as far as buying tools, okay? This is a really good screwdriver, all right? Um, it'll last a long time. It's got a good fitted tip to it, so you can make sure that it fits your screws. But when it comes to buying tools, there's, if you're just buying junk tools, if you're going to your local dollar store and you're buying wrenches, unless your plan is to throw them away eventually, you're wasting your money, okay? So tools should be viewed as an investment, all right? As something that you will have for a long time. This hammer right here is one of my dad's old hammers, okay? And he has had it, or he had had it forever. It's actually got a little bit of a bend to it from swinging it so much, okay, that it actually shaped it to the, to the movement of his arm, okay? So tools will last forever if you take good care of them and if you get good tools on the front end, okay? Any questions about screwdrivers, Phillips, flat? Okay, so... Yeah, so with... Uh, you can use, now, I don't recommend this, okay? But I'm going to show you this. This is a trick I saw my dad do one time, okay? If you are working on a flat screw, okay, yes, yeah, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you are bowed up on it and you're trying to turn it. And you just can't quite get it to go, okay? If you try too hard, you'll end up stripping the head of the screw and then you've got all sorts of problems, okay? But one time I was working with my dad on a car and he couldn't get a screw to turn. And he took the flat screwdriver and he turned it on its side and pressed it into that screw top and turned it that way so he had more leverage. So it created more of a T-handle on it. I mean, it's pretty cool. That's a pretty good trick. So you can take and actually slip it in there from the side. If you'd already, if this was a, a more wore out screw, it would work better. But you can turn it on its side. You can actually give it a little more leverage then. You can actually turn it a little bit more, okay? That's a little insider trick for you, okay? 
All right, so moving on. Our next subject is going to be the claw hammer, okay? Now, I was looking to see if I had any other hammers behind me. They're all different types of hammers, okay? There are different types of claw hammers. You see how the claw is different on these? You can, I mean, there are hundreds, probably not hundreds, but there are a lot of different types of hammers. There are sledge hammers, there are um, ball peen hammers, there are uh, tack hammers, there are brass hammers, there are um, wooden mallets. We've got about four wooden mallets in the shop. We actually just got this when we found it in somebody else's shop. My point though is that there are different hammers for different jobs. However, the claw hammer is probably the most useful, okay? If you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. Okay, that was a pretty good one. That was pretty good. Okay, I just came up with that off the top of my head. All right, so with a claw hammer, I'm not gonna use this one. So this is actually the hammer that's gonna be used in the giveaway. I'm gonna sign it. It's gonna be really pretty. It's a nice handle. It's got a, a leather handle with Scotsman blue stripes and it's actually branded with Scotsman Co. on the handle. It's a nice little collector's hammer. Take good care of that one. You can hand it to your grandchildren one day, okay? All right, so this is a nail. This is a hammer. A, a claw hammer can be used. I have used a claw hammer in the replacement of a maul, so like for, for sledgehammer and something, trying to bust something up. I've used claw hammers before. And I have made a lot of good progress with them. Um, I'm gonna grab a smaller nail. This one's a little big. Well, I said I was, but I don't have one handy. Those are all screws. All right, so we're gonna take this here nail, okay? Now, if you're wanting to break something, you're gonna hit it as hard as you can, okay? If you're wanting to hammer a nail in, there is some finesse to it, okay? You want to make good, straight hits, okay? Now, this is not a good board that I'm nailing into. This is a piece of MDF, but as you come down with it, If you hit it good and straight, it'll drive it good and straight. But also, if you let your uh, the head of the hammer get rounded off, then it'll try to bend the nail as it hits. Okay, you have to be a little more accurate then. All right, I drove that one a little far. I was gonna show you how to use the claw side of it. So, All right, so now you gotta pull that nail out, all right? If you get it to that point, sometimes it'll get stuck and you can't really pull it out. You need something to give you a little more leverage. So what I'm gonna do is grab this little piece of wood right here. I'm gonna slip it under there. Okay, so now I got something I can put a little leverage on. And I can pull it, well, it's still not working. Let me hold it over here. I actually broke the head of that nail off, okay? Nothing I could have done about that, just a cheap nail, but a good hammer. Does everybody understand that? Are you all laughing at me? I mean, I just broke steel or some cheap metal, okay? That's a cheap nail, all right? Now, that's a little bit about the hammer. Does anybody have any questions about hammers? What's something else you could use a hammer for? Think about that. Like, what are what are some projects around the house you could use a hammer for? Driving fence posts. Um, yeah. So, like, if you're wanting to put up a little uh, fence post or a, a little chicken wire fence to maybe keep a pet in or to keep a pet out. Like, say you planted uh, you and your parents planted some tomato plants and you wanted to keep, you could drive stakes in with a hammer, so just wooden stakes, or you could get metal ones and string fence around that. You could drive wooden pegs in. Um, 
If you wanted to hang a piece of artwork, you could take a smaller uh, tack and actually stick that in the wall. But usually when you're dealing with uh, like sheetrock walls in a house, you need to find a stud or use some sort of an anchor system. And so a, a hammer may not be the best tool for that, okay? Now, we're gonna move on to pliers, I think, or is it wrenches? I think we're moving on to pliers. Yes, okay, so pliers date back to ancient Egypt. Pretty cool, okay? Now, you may not know what they were used for back then, but what do you think pliers are used for? Any, there is no wrong answer here, okay? What do you think pliers are used for? Uh-huh, for grabbing things, that's, yeah. For tightening, yeah, you can use them to tighten things. Hmm. For pinching, yes, okay. Now, there are all different types of pliers, okay? Now this is actually a vice grip. This is something a little different. I'm gonna talk about this one first and then I'm gonna get to pliers, okay? Um, a good set of vice grips will get you out of a lot of tight situations, okay? If you are on the road and you're working on something and you don't have wrenches with you, sometimes a vice grip will suffice. It'll get what you need, or I should say suffice. Get it? No? Okay, that wasn't very good. I'll do better. All right, so here's the thing about vice grips. A vice is something that you use to clamp down on something. It tightens down on it, all right? So the way vice grips work is that actually it has this threaded bolt here and it's got an arm inside here that as you fold, it snaps, and which then pushes this part of the head, the bottom of it out, and it allows it to pivot here, tightening it up on whatever it is, okay? So in this situation, let's see if it'll grab these. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm going to loosen it up a little because I don't want to tear out my screwdriver. Because remember, if you take care of your tools, they'll last forever. So you see, now I've got that tightened on there, okay? And if this were a bolt, for instance, you could, if, okay, say you're working on something and you need to use this as a handle. It'll work there, okay? You can put down pressure if you're trying to loosen something up, and you can then twist it with the vice grips, okay? Now I'm gonna show you something else on that here in a minute, all right? Then, here is something that I learned last year, it was last year, new trick, okay? So most pliers are good at grabbing things, okay? If you're working on something and you need to be able to grab something and turn it, pliers are your tool. If you're taking some wiring, okay, this is some speaker wire, and you're wanting to twist it up, you can take, these are needle nose pliers, you can take and grab them, and you can turn that around, okay? Now these are still insulated, so they're not gonna really work. So you can twist it up. That's what pliers are good for, okay? Now, a good set of vice grips if you look right in here, beneath the, the gripping part, beneath the teeth, okay, see how it's got like teeth in there that it grabs? Up in there, there is a little uh, sort of a V cut in this, and then it butts up to a flat part. So if you find yourself in a bind, you're, on the, you're working on your house and you gotta cut some wiring, you're hanging a new light fixture, you're, um, on the side of the road, your trailer wires are messed up on your truck and you're trying to get them working, you need to cut some wire. You can actually take these, put the wire in that part, clamp it down tight. You see that? It actually cut the wire. All right, now that was something I didn't know that good vice grips came with, okay? I've had these vice grips for 
I think my dad gave me these when I started college. And so I, uh, I have used these and used these and used these and didn't even know about that function, okay? So that's something that you can take with you if you're, again, that kind of goes back to the, if you don't have a lot of room in your toolbox or if you can't afford to get a good pair of wire snips or a good pair of pliers, then you can use these and it'll suffice. It'll get what you need done, okay? They also make these that come in a needle nose, okay? So you actually couldn't possibly get everything you needed done out of, you know, these two pliers with this one set, okay? I'm a big fan of vice grips. I use them a lot, all right, in case you can't tell. All right, now, moving on to pliers, okay? Anybody else doing with one hand? If you, okay, if you couldn't use your pliers with one hand, say I. You can just type it. You don't actually have to say it. Kind of like, I, I don't know, is that what using chopsticks is like? Um, so you see, you can hold it here and then use these two fingers. I don't know. I've never used chopsticks. Have y'all ever used chopsticks? Some of you? Okay. Is that what it's like? No, because you're, you're using two sticks, so you're going to have to like, I don't know, okay? Um, I always thought it was so cool when I was growing up and my dad would be working on something and he would take his pliers and he would reach. My dad's got really big arms and um, he would reach up into a tight space that he couldn't get both hands in and he would take his pliers and he'd grab something with them and pull it out or tighten it up and I thought that was so cool, okay? Now, much like the vice grips, these have a hidden feature, okay? A good pair of pliers has a little notch right there, right below the teeth, okay? Right here in the, when it, right when it, there it is, okay? You can slip a wire in there. That's a good cut. I'll show you again, all right? So you can drop it all the way down into that little nook, nook notch, whatever you want to call it and cut it, okay? So that's your uh, typical pliers. Now, a lot of times, these are adjustable. You can sometimes fit the head of a screw or head of a bolt up into the curved part of the mouth. And that'll actually allow you to get a little bit better grip on it, okay? If you can get it in there and it fits and you can clamp down on it, it'll give you a little bit better of a grip as opposed to trying to grab it out here. Now that sometimes will get the job done. Sometimes, you know, it'll get it to where you can actually work it a little bit. But I like to try and get it up in here. Really set it down in there and then I can bow up on it, okay? Now, moving on to the needle nose pliers, okay? Oh, I never told y'all what they use. Did anybody, what do you think they use the tools for, the pliers for? I'm sorry. Y'all gonna have to type these answers again. Those are the rules, okay? I make the rules, this is my class, okay? Varsity Tutors does not make the rules, I'm doing it, okay? What did they use pliers for in 3000 BC in ancient Egypt? If you're Googling it, if you're looking it up on the computer right now, you're cheating. I'm sure they did use them. Okay, some of you said for picking up things. And some of you were said for, for uh, tightening things or for um, pinching things. And you're sort of, uh, if you said pinching things or picking up things, you're pretty much right, okay? They use them like tongs, okay? Now these are not tongs. These are nail pullers, helpers. Um, but you would, they would, they de developed that technology right there, that pivot. That pivot is everything. That's what makes pliers pliers, okay? That pivot right there. Okay, remember, one-handed, baby. Look at that, look at that, okay? They use them for picking up things out of fire, okay? So they would, you know, let's say that this was a fire and I was, you know, needing to get something out of it. I didn't want to reach in there with my hands or scoop in there. Think about like, when your parents are grilling a steak, you don't wanna 
You don't want to take a fork and stab that steak and flip it over because it'll allow you juices to run out. Okay? You want to take some tongs and grab it and flip it or a spatula. But in this case, they use tongs, but they called them ply. They, they referred to them as pliers. Okay? My little girl, Helen, who's two and a half, calls them pliers. So now I call them pliers. All right. So, a little ancient history for you there. With needle nose pliers, the way they essentially are the same thing as these, only you can't. These are slotted, so you can make, you can open them up a little bit so you can grab something a little bit bigger, okay? Needle nose pliers are fixed, okay? But you can get a lot of pressure out here on the tip. Okay, you can really grab something and compress it with that tip out there. Okay, and you can flatten out a wire with it. You can get a lot done. You can pinch things and twist them together. So, like if you're working with wire and you're um, you're wanting to twist them together, okay, you can take and I mean really. No, that didn't work. I was going to show you how to twist wire together. Um, but this, this will do it. But then also they have cutters on them, just like all the other pliers have. These create a little bit cleaner of a cut, though. So if you're wanting to be a little more precise, these are my go-to. Now, I have wire snips and everything in, like, my big toolbox. But if I'm out on the road, these are my go-to for cutting. Okay? Now... We're going to move on to wrenches. All right. Um, what are the different types of wrenches? You see these that they're there on the slide. Um, these all answer to the name of wrench. Okay. Can you tell me what these three are? Okay. I saw Allen wrench. Uh huh. Socket wrench. Okay, and the other one, yeah, you're saying it's just a wrench. It's uh, maybe called an open-ended wrench. So you, you got a boxed end and an open end. Okay. Um, wrenches are vital to any project. Okay, you're going to end up needing wrenches. Or maybe not to any project, but to a lot of projects. Okay some kind of a wrench. Now, I have different types of wrenches. These are actually called uh, ratchet wrenches. You hear that? Sounds good, doesn't it? That is a good, fine click. So this is something that my dad uh, used to when my dad would go tool shopping. He would take and he would hold up a ratchet or a ratchet wrench and he would listen to that click and he would want to feel how strong it was for one, but then also like how fine of a click it was. Because some ra some ratchets, especially cheap ones, that click is it doesn't click as many times as it's going around. And what that means, if you're in a tight situation and you're having to turn a wrench all the way to here before it actually grabs, you might as well be using a, a regular wrench, a boxed wrench. You might, you know, a socket wrench is going to be useless in that situation. Okay, um, there are different types of boxed ends. None of these. These are all. Uh, I can't remember how many points that is. Anybody know? I can't remember. Uh, so you have different points going around the wrench. Okay, and the thing about that is it allows you to get a better bite. What you call it is when it gets a bite on it. Um, it allows you to get a better bite on a wrench, okay? Now, if you are loosening a bolt, let's say that, can that fit that? Yeah, that fits, all right? Let's say that this bolt, you know what, let's, let's actually stick this one in this table. And then I'll show you a little trick. Yeah, that ain't gonna work, I need a drill for that. 
um, or I need to drill a pilot hole. Um, okay, so let's say that you are wanting to loosen one of these screws or a bolt, okay? And you've got, you take this wrench and it is tight. Let's say you're working on um, an old tree house, okay? See, I brought it back. Talked about bird houses last time. I kept calling them tree houses. Let's say you're working on your tree house, okay? And there's a bolt in it that's maybe holding the ladder up or it's holding a swing up and it's been there since, you know, your fifth birthday, okay? That's how long it's been there. And you're, you're 16 now, okay? That's 11 years of being out in the weather, getting rained on, not being taken care of. Let's say that you're wanting to loosen that up, okay? And you're gonna take it off and put in a new bolt or put in a new swing or put in a new ladder. You don't loosen with the open end, okay? You never loosen with the open end. The reason is that it gives it more opportunity to slip. And if it slips and you strip it, you're never gonna get that thing off. You're gonna to have to, you know, try to use your vice grips. You're gonna to have to try to use a screwdriver. You're gonna to have to try to do different things and you may end up having to cut it off, all right? So what you do is you take the boxed end, okay? And you slip it on there. You make sure you got a good bite and then you bow up on it, all right? Now, this is my greatest trick that I am about to bestow upon you that my father gave me, okay? Let's say you got this screw here and you're trying to loosen it and you can't, and you're bowing up on it and you just need a little more something there, okay? I'm trying to get my teeth in the right place, okay? Well, then you can take another box wrench, okay? Now look really close here, okay? You could take another box wrench and you can slip it like that. See how it slides up on there? And it gives you more leverage so that you can turn and loosen that bolt. Okay, that is the greatest tool tip I can give you. All right, the first time I knew that my, uh, that my dad was a genius, it was because he did that and someone else who was there saw it and said, oh my gosh, your daddy's a genius. Okay, that's how I knew, all right? So as far as tools go, that's kind of a quick rundown, all right? I've given, I've given you a little bit on like how to use a hammer, different projects you can use it for. I've given you a little bit of information on um, on pliers, on vice grips, needle nose pliers, wrenches, and screwdrivers, okay? So now what I want you to do is take this and go and build your own toolbox, okay? I think that everyone should have their own toolbox, okay? And it doesn't have to be something big. I've got multiple toolboxes. I've got tool rolls. Uh, I have a tool roll that lives, it's leather, it's really cool looking. It lives in my truck. Um, Aaron gave it to me for Christmas from one year. And I have then taken it. You can go to your local hardware store and you can buy a ready-made kit, okay? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? but you can get it a little more custom fitted to you and to what you like if you do it this way. Like if you take a hammer, you know, that you like from a store and you buy it, if you take a uh, multi-tool screwdriver from a store that you like and you buy it, if you take a, uh, an adjustable wrench, now this is one we didn't get to, but this can serve this purpose, okay? If you, are in a bind and you need, like, go buy you a really good quality adjustable wrench, okay? Crescent wrench. Not, you know, don't go and buy, like, if, if, you, if you can't afford to get a good set of wrenches, then go buy one really good adjustable 
four inch. Okay, now check this out. Um, this weekend, or last week, I was demoing a house and I found this really good, cool little tiny little adjustable wrench. I mean, that's pretty handy. That thing will go way out. It gets pretty big. It'll go up to like a three quarter, maybe five eighths. Um, so you can buy different sizes of adjustable wrenches, all right? But my point here is that you, you can go and buy a, a ready-made kit, and that's fine. I have used those before. But even the ones that I have, like the tool kit that's in my truck that my wife gave me, I have since then taken and like taken tools out of it that I'll never use and thrown them away or put them in my big toolbox and then I've I've replaced them with other tools. Because this I mean like really for the average person this will suffice. It's big enough, okay? If you're, you know, working on a project once a month, this will suffice. It'll get you where you need to go. You know, you can add the tools you needed to it as you need them. Now I have lots of tools because this is what I do for a living. And this is not even like, these are the tools that we don't use very often. That's why I like they're hanging here because we don't use them very often. Um, the right tool for the right job can make all the difference. Okay. I, yeah. A craftsman never blames his tools, but you're kind of only as good as your tools. Okay. So I think that now we are going to get ready for a selfie. Do we do the selfie first or the Q and A? Let's do that selfie because uh, one, it gives people a chance to ask more questions. So if you're kind of yeah. digesting and you know, you've got more questions for Ben, fire those off. And um, since you were talking about kind of building your toolkit from, you know, like the high quality tools and all that, this is their chance to do it. So you guys have those phones ready or, or uh, cameras, I guess, if you kind of go old school with your cameras. Uh, it's selfie time now. So uh, we'll give you about 45 seconds, lean into the screen, take that picture with Ben, and then we'll give you the instructions on the way out for how to enter the contest for that hammer. So take yep, it away, So this is the hammer. I'm going to use it in the selfies. Make sure you tag me when you post them because I want to see them, okay? So first one, I'm going to act like I'm hammering my hand. Okay, next one. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to prop it here. And I'm going to stand looking really cool behind it. And next, I'm going to see how many tools I can hold. In one hand. All right, so that was like three options. Pretty good. I think so. Uh, one of the most common questions I'm sure was, could you juggle? How many, how many tools can you juggle? But we may let you. Can I juggle? Let's see. Okay. Oh, so, do I need to open the blade on the knife before I start? That's, actually, yeah, uh, I actually, actually cannot juggle. Demo. All right. <laughs> That's perfect. Is we didn't go over safety rules. Yeah. So I keep work gloves, work uh, glasses, and a knife and tape. And Did I lose you, Brian? There you are. There. Sorry about that. Yeah, I lost you for a second. But good, good, you know, craftsman never blames this tool. Sometimes they blame their Wi Fi, though. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, hey, we've got a ton of questions in addition to can you juggle? Um, so let's dive into those because people have been asking some pretty amazing questions. Um, one sort of overarching one that we'll get into some um, specific tools yeah. is that uh, you talked a lot about, you know, make sure you have high quality tools and all those kind of things. How do you know you're getting a high quality tool for, you, for those who want to make sure other than you want it in an Instagram contest from, uh, you know, from uh, Laura Mercantile, what, uh, what should pe people be thinking about when they go to buy tools to make sure they're getting high quality? Um, so one of the things that I like to look for is, um, forged in the USA or made in USA. And now this is not a uh, uh, 
it's not necessarily a plug for American-made products, but the reason for that is that um, the foundries in the United States they use really good quality metals, and if you start with a really good quality product, then it will, I mean, it'll, the end product will be that much better. So like, if you look on, um, this one says forged in USA, or they may say made in USA. Um, those are usually really good products. You can then like, if it's something that's, that's adjustable, or let me come back to this. So like with a wrench, walk around the hardware store, okay? Because if they won't fit the bolt in the store, the Probably not going to fit the bolts on your car. Okay. Now, if it's something that's adjustable that moves, play with it. See how it like does it move smoothly? Is it like you don't want on an adjustable wrench? You don't want this piece to be flopping around because you'll never be able to get it tight on a wrench. Okay. So that's that's another tip um, on your screwdrivers. If it's you know if it's a a good brand. And I don't like to get into talking about brands because there are good products out there, but a lot of times um, there are brands that just have a name that it means something. And I mean, these days we all have the internet in our hand. So, you know, research that a little bit. Don't just walk in and buy one because it's a brand that you've heard of because a lot of stores have bought big brands and then changed the way they're made. So they no longer carry that, that weight with them anymore. So, you know, you may be walking into a store thinking, I'm going to buy the brand of tools that my dad bought. And maybe it's not the same tool anymore. It's not the same. So make sure you do that research and, uh, and dig around a little bit and think. And then like with a Phillips screwdriver, look at the head of that. Make sure that it's got a good taper to it. You can see like they'll start to have a little bit of a, a wobble to them. And it'll allow them to, to then strip out your screws. So that's just a little bit of how to track down good tools. All right, good advice and uh, and thank you. Yeah, I guess if it was you know, your grandfather's favorite brand of tools, it's been a few years since then. So, um, yeah. hey, as you're talking screwdrivers and uh, and strip screws, a um, lot of people asking about that. Can you talk us through sort of you know now we know um, you know and thanks like make sure we find the perfect fit. But um, what are some other things that lead to strip screws? Uh, stripped screws, and then what can we do if we need to take out screws that happen to be stripped? use this, this as an example. So on my utility knife here, it's got a Phillips and flat screw that holds it together. Okay, you can look at that and you can see that if I'm coming in at an angle, it's not going to be seated down in there very good. So it's going to continue to slip. Okay, so you want to make sure, and this, this is the rule with a screw, with an electric screwdriver, like a cordless drill, or a manual screwdriver. Make sure that you are good and square with that screw. If you lean it a little bit, it's gonna have more of an opportunity to, to strip, okay? And make sure it's seated in there, and then when you're trying to break it loose, make sure you don't, you're not trying to thread it all the way off on the first try, you're trying to just get it to break loose, okay? so. Put really good pressure on it, make sure it's square, and then once it breaks loose, you don't have to turn it far. You're just trying to get it to turn once. Then you can start being a little sloppier with it as you're coming out, okay? Now, the same goes for a flat or a slotted. If you're a little bit off or if you're not centered on that screw, it's going to give you the opportunity to strip it, okay? So, both times, make sure you're good and you're square on that, all right? Now, a lot of times, you'll be working with a screw um, that you could also use a wrench on. In this situation, okay, so like right here, I could use a flat screwdriver to get this screw out. Or I could grab a 5 sixteenths wrench. Okay, in that situation, always grab the wrench or grab what they call a nut driver, and it's um, it'll look like a screwdriver, but it'll have you know a boxed wrench on the end, like a like a socket wrench.
All right, thank you. As the king of uh, stripping screws myself, um, this is uh, this is good advice. To add. The right angle, I think, is everything. I was actually, if I may, you're watching you hammer that nail, um, and just the like the pure angle you were striking that thing at was pretty amazing. So that's what I took away from today. Is I need to to learn to hammer more like you. Um, so actually, the two most common questions we got were requests really for demonstrations. One is people want to see if you could use vice grips to get that nail out of the board. So think about if that's a, a good move. It is actually, so uh, that's actually, so we use a lot of reclaimed lumber here in our shop. And now this is a, a something that I don't like to talk about that we'll do, but sometimes we've got some cheap screwdrivers in our shop, some just cheap ragtag flat screwdrivers and we'll actually take and we'll drive them under the head of a nail and then we'll take and we'll push up on it okay now that's one of my good screwdrivers I shouldn't use that one but we'll do that we'll take and we'll just like whatever it takes because when we're working with reclaimed wood we have some really expensive equipment in here that we don't need to hit a nail Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll do whatever it takes to get a nail out of a board because we don't really care if it leaves a hole because there's already a hole there. But then a lot of times we get in a situation like this where we've got a nail that's sticking up and we'll take and we'll, I'm um, going to have to loosen these up a little. All right, so we'll take class. Y'all did great. All right, they're learning, man. That was uh, that was impressive. So also just, yeah, on the fly demonstrations are, are pretty good. So the other one they wanted to see, you know, if we've got a, uh, you know, a, a cameraman there, if you want to walk up, people were uh, pretty impressed with the, uh, the, the, you know, double your wrenches, double your leverage um, technique and wanted to see okay. if you could do that. I'll right step towards the camera. camera. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to come over to the camera. You see me here? Mm -hmm. All right, so... This is my dad's trick, all right? So let's say that you, this is your bolt right there, and you can't quite get it to break loose. You gotta make sure that the angle of your open end, make sure that the angle of your open end is angled down, okay? Or angled away from the way that you're trying to turn it. And for instance, like in this way, I'm trying to turn the wrench this way. So what I'll do is make sure that the angle of the open end is pointed down, and then I'll take another wrench and slip it up on here, and it gives you more leverage. Now, you have to hold it straight, and you have to hold it tight because it'll slip on you. And if you're bowed up on something as hard as you can and you're pushing, it'll slip on you. Now, if you were wanting to go the other way, you would need to flip your box then over on your wrench. And that's it. Pretty cool, huh? Thank you. And that's, that's good advice to pay, pay attention to which way you're twisting it because yeah, I, as someone who's, who slipped some tools in my day and has scars on the knuckles and things to, uh, to prove it. Um, some, some of us have to learn those the hard way, which I guess leads me to one last question. We can do maybe a rapid fire round. So we went through hammers, screwdrivers, wrenches and pliers. Um, what are the biggest mistakes that people make with each of those that uh, you know beginners with tools should make sure they don't have to learn the hard way? The biggest mistake that I've seen people do is they'll use the open end to try and loosen something that's tight because it's easier to just slip it over it, okay? It's easier to slip it over that bolt and do that and let it slip off than it is to actually get the boxed in onto the bolt head, okay? So that's one that I've seen people do a lot. Um, the keeping a screw 
uh, a driver, be it a screwdriver or a cordless drill, keeping it square with the screw. That one's a big one. Um, let's see. Uh, not drilling pilot holes before you... So this was something that we talked about when we were building the birdhouse. If you were going to use screws to assemble it, you would need to drill pilot holes. And in that project, we were trying to build it with as few tools as possible. So not drilling a pilot hole, okay, for instance, this screw perfectly fits this screwdriver, okay? So I potentially should be able to just take it and screw it into a board. Okay, however, without a pilot hole, it is very hard to do, okay, no matter how much pressure you put on it. Um, now, if you're, and also you run into other problems, like it'll split the wood and that sort of thing. Um, and then I have seen people try and take just your simple pair of pliers and try to break a bolt loose. Now, if you're in an emergency situation and it's all you've got, Try it, but you're going to end up causing more damage than possible because, I mean, you're going to end up causing more da damage than you thought possible because, like, in that situation, even the open end of a wrench is going to be better than you trying to squeeze a metal bolt and turn it, okay? If it's so seized on there that you can't, like, that you need this for it, it's probably going to be more than this. Okay, so that's another thing is that people will take a pair of pliers to try and break something loose when if they would just reach for an adjustable wrench or a good boxed wrench, you'd be better off. Um, and then um, I have seen people do this where they'll like something, a bolt will be seized up and they'll hit it to try and break it loose. If you don't really know what you're doing in that situation, you're going to end up nicking that bolt head in a certain way that it won't fit the wrench anymore. And then you're going to have to put a different size on it, and it's just really, it's not going to work. If you are in a situation where you need to hit it with a hammer, really make sure you know what you're doing or, or call somebody who does know what they're doing. It can be done but I have never done that successfully. I think that if, if you haven't done it successfully, I think, uh, you know, as mere mortals should probably steer clear of that as a technique. I will say that I'm feeling very seen right now. I feel like I've made at least, you know, 80% of those mistakes you were talking about. So um, wish, wish you had been doing this years prior, but you learn from it. So um, I'll say that. All right. If we, let's end on a high note, we're talking about mistakes. Let's, uh, let's end with triumphs. Um, what is what is your all time favorite tool and your favorite project that you completed with it? A lot of people want to know your favorite tool. Um, all time favorite tool? I mean, it really it depends on the project. Um, I love these screwdrivers. Um, I hate to plug a brand, but they're from Grace is the name of the company, Grace USA, and they're just really good because like uh, so if you or in a situation, find the one that fits it. Uh, that one doesn't really fit. Well, for this, it'll work. All right, so you see how that's a, uh, it's a four-sided shaft for the screwdriver. You can take and slip a wrench over it, which allows you to get a lot more, um, a lot more leverage on it. So like if you bow up on a screw, and you're trying to get it loose, you can take and slip that wrench over it and pull it around, okay? Um, these screwdrivers are some of my favorite tools. Um, golly, favorite tool. That is a big one because, like, it really depends on the project. I like a good uh, socket wrench set. Um, I mean, as far as, like, personal tools go, my dad's old hammer is pretty good. Uh, it's got orange spray paint because he was afraid people would steal his tools, so he sprayed orange on all of them. Um, I like a good router because you can put a really decorative edge on a piece of wood. 
Um, but then again, like, okay, I'll tell you, so this right here, when they came out with these socket or uh, these ratchet wrenches a few years ago, these ratcheting, you know, gear wrench made them, Blackhawk made them, Craftsman has made them, uh, pretty much every company that makes wrenches has made them. For me and working on cars, it revolutionized my world because there are a lot of times you can't get a ratchet into a tight spot. You have to use a wrench. Well, this right here, being able to take and work a bolt back and forth without ever taking it off was sort of revolutionary in my world. So that's kind of a quick rundown of my favorite tools. Um, honestly, this is a silly one, but safety glasses, um, trying to think of, so I, I used to be, you know, one of these guys who was like, nah, not too worried about it. But one time I was sharpening a lawnmower blade and a piece of metal hit my eye and it ended up embedding and I had to go to the eye doctor and had to drill it out. Um, and so after that, I've been really specific about wearing safety glasses. And two times while filming Hometown, and they've always cut them out, and I said, you should leave them in there because I, it shows you that you need, and we had a fork lift up there, and the guys that worked with me had set the fork lift to where they could walk back and forth under it, but it was eye level for me because I'm a lot taller than those guys. And I, you know, had been really careful, but there was this one time when I was moving something and it was a twofold. I was in a big hurry and I was wearing my safety glasses. Luckily, I was wearing my safety glasses because I stood up one point and turned and hit the fork and it hit right in the center of my lens and it saved my eye, okay? So in that situation, it would have been bad. Um, another time, we were framing in a, a wall and I was using somebody else's frame and nailer, and sometimes they'll double punch, they'll, they'll hit twice, and two nails will come out. But the second, so the first one went in, and the second one I was pulling the gun back, and it hit the head of that nail, and I kid you not, somewhere there is footage of this, it hit that nail, ricocheted back, and stuck into the lens of my safety glasses. Kid you not. So in those situations, situations, these have been my favorite tools. I think that's maybe the best advice anyone here could get is that, you know, no matter how good your tools are, you will need safety glasses. So, um, hey, Ben, thanks. Uh, thanks a ton for uh, for all the advice. I know I learned a ton, um, even from mistakes I hadn't made personally. And a um, whole lot of, uh, of great, uh, as you saw, kind of they, they move fast the comments, but a uh, lot of gratitude from here. So huge thanks to Ben. Uh, we're going to post on your way out, everybody, the, um, the instructions for getting those Instagram photos up so you can win that uh, that good looking hammer there um and reminder you know there's all kinds of ways to be a craftsman our creativity collection at varsitytutors.com check out a whole bunch of classes um on everything from arts and crafts and, and woodwork projects too if, uh, if you just want to be funny like ben we've got improv classes so i'd highly recommend check those out so check out the creativity collection um ben any parting thoughts on the way out um make sure you got good tools and be careful. Did that work? You hear me? Got it. Yep. Have good tools and be out? careful. I um yeah, I think be careful is uh, is a pretty good one. Like you said, I think in the first class, the more of a hurry you're in, the more of the mistakes you make. So um, awesome. Thanks again, Ben, and uh, to everyone. We'll uh, we'll see you back for some more classes soon. On the way out, make sure you uh, you get those Instagram pictures up because, as Ben said, he wants to see them. So huge thanks, everybody.